Welcome to Physics with Mr. Brazil. Uh, today we're going to be looking at kinematic equations and we're going to apply them to a chase problem. So this is part one, part two. So uh, stay tuned for a second one soon. Here we go. A speeder passes a police officer traveling above the speed limit at 44 meters per second. The police officer accelerates her patrol car from rest to 5.5 meters per second. The question, how long will it take the officer to catch the speeder and how far from the officer's rest position? So to tackle this problem, I would recommend you draw a position time graph. Okay, and the zeroth position is the police officer's rest position and the speeder is at a constant velocity, a nice sloping line. So here's the speeder. The police officer, she's going to accelerate and it's going to make kind of a parabolic change because she's changing velocity. So they're going to cross at some point in time and distance. So for the speeder, I'm going to take the kinematic equation x final equals x initial plus the initial velocity or the constant velocity of the speeder plus one half the speeder's acceleration times t squared. And you probably went to yourself immediately, wait, the speeder isn't accelerating. That's right, a constant velocity isn't acceleration. So a is gone. Also, since x naught, the initial velocity is zero, so that's gone. So the speeder's equation simply derives v speeder times time. So let's do the police officer's uh, distance. The final distance for both of these folks will be some x final. So x initial for the police officer also is zero. And the officer's initial velocity, well, that's zero because going from rest, plus one half the officer's speed or ex uh, excuse me, acceleration. So this equation simply becomes x final equals one half the officer's acceleration times time squared. So since they're at the same distance, we can now determine this t that the two will have for that distance that they're gonna meet at. So since this is equal, so it'll be v speeder times time equal to one half the acceleration of the officer times t squared. So let's solve for t. What's sweet is that we can divide t out on both sides. Therefore, this t is gone for the speeder, and one of the t's are gone for the officer's acceleration. So v speeder is now equal to one half a t. Well, let's solve for the time. Time is going to equal two times the velocity of the speeder over the officer's acceleration. Let's plug in some values. So 44 meters per second. Divide that by 5.5 meters per second squared. And that's going to give us 16 seconds. So it's going to take 16 seconds for the officer to catch up. Well, finding the distance is actually pretty easy. We can take one of these equations, either one, off to the right-hand side there, and we could solve for the distance. I'm going to take the speeders because it's a little easier. So the velocity of the speeder is 44 meters per second times the 16 seconds, that's going to give us 700, 704 meters. And if you're all concerned, well, check the police officers. You're going to notice that you're going to get the same thing, one half times 5.5 meters per second squared times the 16 seconds squared. And that also is equal to 704 meters. So the distance that the officer will catch 
the speeder will be at 704 meters proper thing to do is to write this out so the police officer will catch the speeder in 16 seconds at 704 meters from her rest position. Boom, and that's a proper way to answer a physics question. So keep doing physics, and I hope this helps. Have fun, bye.